SwiftUI lets us attach gestures to any views, and the effects of those gestures can also be animated. We'll be looking at gestures in more detail later on, but for now, let's try something relatively simple. A card that we can drag around the screen, but when we let go, it snaps back into its original location. First, our initial layout. Linear gradient, 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 colors, an array of dot yellow, dot red, start point, top leading, end point, bottom trailing, dot frame, width 300, height 200, dot clip shape, rounded rectangle, corner radius 10. That draws a card-like view in the center of the screen. We want to move that around the screen based on the location of our finger, and that requires three steps. First, we need some state to store the amount of their drag. At state, private var drag amount equals CG size dot zero. Second, we want to use that size to influence the card's position on screen. SwiftUI has a special modifier for this called offset, which lets us offset the X and Y coordinate of a view without moving other views around it. You can pass in discrete X and Y coordinates if you want to, but by no mere coincidence, offset can also take a CG size directly. So step two is to add this modifier to the card gradient. Dot offset, drag amount. Now comes the important part. We can create a drag gesture and attach it to the card. Drag gestures have two extra modifiers that are useful to us here. On change lets us run a closure whenever the user moves their finger. And on ended lets us run a closure when the user lifts their finger off the screen, ending the drag. Both of those closures are given a single parameter, which describes the drag operation, where it started, where it is currently, how far it moved, and so on. For our unchanged modifier, we're going to read the translation of the drag, which tells us how far it's moved from the start point. We can assign that directly to drag amount so that our view moves along with the gesture. For unended, we're going to ignore the input entirely because we'll be setting drag amount back to zero. So add this modifier to the linear gradient now. Dot gesture, drag gesture, on changed, self dot drag amount equals dollar zero dot translation. Dot on ended, underscore in, self dot drag amount equals dot zero. If you run the code, you'll see you can now drag the gradient card around and when you release the drag, it will jump back to the center. The card has its offset determined by drag amount, which in turn is being set by the drag gesture. Now that everything works, we can bring that movement to life with some animation, and we have two options. Add an implicit animation that will animate the drag and the release, or add an explicit animation to animate just the release. To see the former in action, we'll add a modifier to the linear gradient, dot animation, dot spring. As you drag around, the card will move to the drag location with a slight delay because of that spring animation, but it will also gently overshoot if you make sudden movements. To see explicit animations in action, remove the animation modifier and change your existing unended code to this with animation dot spring. Now the card will follow your drag immediately because that's not being animated but when you release it, it will animate. If we combine offset animations with drag gestures and a little delay, we can create remarkably fun animations without a lot of code. To demonstrate this, we can write the text Hello Swift UI as a series of individual letters, each one with a background color and offset that's controlled by some state. Strings are just slightly fancy arrays of characters, so we can get a real array from a string like this, array Hello Swift UI. Anyway, try us out and see what you think. Let letters equals array hello swift UI. At state private var enabled equals false. At state private var drag amount equals cg size dot zero. Hstack spacing zero. For each zero two letters dot count. Num in. Text string self dot letters num dot padding five dot font title dot background self dot enabled 
question mark, color dot blue, or color dot red. Dot offset, self dot drag amount. Dot animation, animation dot default, dot delay, the double of num, divided by 20. Then, gesture, drag gesture, on changed is self dot drag amount equals dollar zero dot translation. On ended is underscore in self dot drag amount equals dot zero self dot enabled dot toggle. If you run that code, you'll see that any letter can be dragged around to have the whole string follow suit, with a brief delay causing a snake like effect. SwiftUI will also add in color changing as you release the drag animating between blue and red even as the letters move back to the center.